Okay, so today we're going to discuss subatomic particles. I'm Dr. Poe. So our goals here are to differentiate subatomic particles by relative mass, charge, location in an atom, and to identify which subatomic particles have significant mass, which is going to be impor important later on, and identify which subatomic particles use for bonding. So that's those bottom two are really quite easy. Okay, so we've got three subatomic particles that we're talking about, and so when we say sub atomic, what that means is it's smaller than an atom. So we know that atoms are made of protons, which can be ab abbreviated P plus or H plus, because they have a mass of one atomic mass unit and they're a positive charge. This is why they have a little plus sign right there. So positive charge. So protons are positive. And they have a mass of one atomic mass unit. Neutrons are neutral in charge. So we abbreviate them N0. They have a mass of one atomic mass unit. And they have a neutral charge. So neither positive nor negative. And then the final one electrons. So electrons, those can be abbreviated as E minus. They basically have zero mass. They are so small. They do have a small, small, small mass, but it is absolutely ridiculous how small it is. So we just estimate it as zero. They basically have no effect on the mass of the atom itself. And these, with that negative charge, electrons are negative. Negative charge. Okay. So, now let's talk about where these are in the atom itself. So, protons, with that positive charge, are right in the center. So, and protons are really kind of cool because the number of protons is characteristic for an atom, and that equals the atomic number. So if you're looking at the periodic table, you see the atomic number, that's the same thing as the number of protons. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So this atom would have an atomic number of six. That would make it carbon. Okay, and then, so this is at the center. It's also got neutrons, which I'm not going to draw anything in the center of them. Four, five, six. But neutrons are also in the what's called the atomic nucleus, the center of the atom. So the nucleus is what has all of the mass. So the mass of an atom com comes completely from the protons, which have a mass of one atomic mass unit, and the neutrons. So it's, it's all centered at the nucleus, at the center of the atom. And that's from our protons and also from our neutrons. The electrons do not play a significant role in the mass of an atom because their mass is basically insignificant. Okay, and then floating around, outside of the nucleus at some distance called a quantum there's what's called these orbital rings and that's where the electrons are so maybe an electron here maybe an electron here one two three four five and six. So these electrons exist on the outside of the atom. So as we would expect, that is the subatomic particle used for bonding, because whatever's on the outside, that's what's going to come in contact with other atoms in order to form chemical bonds. So these electrons are really, really important to kind of understand and figure out where they are and what's involved in bonding and what's not. So in this example, in carbon, we have an equal number of protons and electrons because atoms are neutral in charge. So the number of Positively charged subatomic particles better equal the number of negatively charged subatomic particles. The neutrons don't have to equal either one. 
Okay, but out here, we've got four electrons in the second orbital and two in this inner orbital. So we'd expect only the electrons in the outer orbital to participate in bonding, and that is exactly why carbon is able to make four bonds, because in this outermost orbital, where these outermost electrons are, those are what's going to be involved in bonding. And then one, two, three, four, that's how many bonds it can have. Okay, thank you for listening.